Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the round two release of the AMT 65 Mustang GT Funny Car. Now this is a repop. It's been reissued in a number of formats, but it commemorates the day when the funny cars were king and uh, fairly new. Um, they called them funny cars, if you didn't know, because of the altered wheelbase which made the car lighter and shorter and they looked a little funny compared to the stock car. So this kit's seen multiple box arts over the years but the molds have been cleaned up well and repaired as there's very little flash on this kit compared to its previous versions. It's a skill level 2 for uh, modelers in the moderate range 12 years and older and the build consists of 90 parts molded in white with a nicely detailed motor and the ability to add some extras. It also has some chrome pieces, clear, clear blue, and vinyl tires. And there's a new high quality sheet of decals. The tubular frame is simple and it has a tub style interior. And the body is a single piece molding with minor mold lines which has that modified wheelbase. The rear tires are excellent tampo printed slicks. Overall the dimensions are 7 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Grab these parts from the kit and we can assemble much of the motor before we paint it. Add the block and transmission halves together and then attach the heads. I painted my motor blue but you can really use your color of choice for a funny car. The transmission is steel colored and the starter is black with an orange oil filter. Assemble the velocity stacks onto the manifold and add that to the block. Try and line them up so they're nice and straight. Add the valve covers and the breathers to the heads and paint the belt flat black and attach it to the front cover. Add the front cover and oil pan to the motor and then paint the header steel and install the header collectors to them. And then install those headers onto the cylinder heads. I decided to add a pre-wired distributor to my motor so I put one together using some electrical wires and some tubing uh, along with some two millimeter bead tubing for the spark plug boots. So I put those all together then drilled out the uh, locations on the heads for them and the hole for the distributor shaft and installed that into place. Now here is the completed left and right sides of the motor. But I found out later you should probably install the headers after the motor is in place instead of in the instructions as they are now. The interior is next so paint the tub aluminum. The pedals are black. The seat is flat black with red seat belts and the shift knob and the steering wheel are black too. The roll cage is flat black and the dash aluminum and detailed. I painted some of the knobs black on the dash but unfortunately there are no gauges in the kit. Uh, so I went online, found some uh, instrument panel gauges and then used a inkjet color printer to print them out and glued them into place with some white glue. Install the roll cage and the seat to the interior tub then add the shifter and insert the column into the dash and install the dash into the tub and the slots provided. Now looking over the kit I determined that I'm going to deviate from the instructions at this point and not start the body due to possible fit issues. So I recommend that you assemble the chassis completely and save the body assemblies until last. That way if you have some fit issues you can repair uh, the, the body prior to painting. Also painting the body last gives less opportunity to damage the paint. Now here the chassis is done in one assembly and I'm going to break it down to simplify building and prevent damage. But start with removing the copyright script that's imprinted heavily on the rear panel 
can be scraped off and sanded away. Then paint the frame flat black and the floor pan aluminum. Now use these parts to assemble the front suspension. I painted the shocks yellow and the torsion bars aluminum. Then I installed the axle, add the track, uh, track bar and then the torsion bars to the axle and the frame and install the shocks. Gather the parts for the rear axle and install it. We'll first assemble and paint the axle black and the torsion bars black too. The ye yellow shocks uh, for highlight and then install the axle with the shocks in place and add the torsion bars. Paint the engine bay braces flat black and install them onto the frame. This will give you an idea of what that assembly will look like when it's installed. I'll paint the drive shaft steel and insert that into the rear end of the transmission and then install the motor at this time onto the frame. Now look for the contact points and scrape off any paint and glue the interior tub to the frame. The front tires are made from styrene so you'll have to cut those off of the tree and clean them up and then paint them with a uh, rubber color and assemble the uh, rim front and the rim back into the tires and now they can be inserted onto the front axle. To give the tires a more realistic look press and roll the tread on some fine grit sandpaper to give them a used look. Now moving to the rear tires um, you can rough up the smooth surface there in the same way to give it a street run look. Now paint the rim back aluminum install the rim uh, front and back and insert the tires onto the rear axle. So here we're at the point of having a completed rolling chassis and we can start to work on the body soon and make sure that all the pieces fit together properly. Now the body uh, can be assembled prior to paint and it gives you a better finish with overall coverage that way. So the front and the rear roll pans are installed as well as the radiator wall, but the hood is left loose um, so that it doesn't so that it gets completely painted. Now we'll mock up the body onto the chassis uh, for test fit, and then once you drop the hood into place, you'll notice it's <laughs> it's just a little too small for the injector stacks. So use a file to carefully enlarge the hole to fit. Make sure that uh, you can get the hood on when the injector stacks are all in place. And once again most of the body is pretty clear and free of defects but there are some roof lines on the C pillars at the rear that you'll need to uh, smooth off and remove. Carefully sand them away uh, before primer and check over the whole body before we do anything. Give it a, a clean and a rinse. Use a high quality primer and coat the inside and the outside first with some light coats and then a little heavier till you get a good even finish. Let that cure then wet sand the whole car again with some fine sandpaper. Once again rinse and let dry air dry uh, for your base color. I used a bright blue metallic for my body color and painted it the same way as the primer. Start out with some light mist coats and add heavier coats until you get a good even finish on the whole body. Round 2 has done a great job of uh, at stepping up the game for their decal sets. So we're going to install those now and I would suggest you go with the largest ones first and once again strongly suggest that you also use some decal setting solution so that those uh, uh, decals will settle onto the body and stick well along with plenty of warm water to make sure you can position them. Once your decals are dry, you can now give your body a clear coat to seal them into place. The 65 Mustang had plenty of chrome trim, so I used some foil to give it that look. And it's just like tape. You stick it into place where the trim is and then trim it off with a brand new hobby knife. With this model, you get an optional set of translucent blue glass and a standard set of glass. Either way, uh, I usually dip my glass into some pledge floor care or future floor care and make sure that you wick it off and then let it dry thoroughly. Now you can install the glass using some white glue or some of the testers clear parts cement. Gather these parts for the front end and paint the radiator flat black with a gold cap and the grill gets a 50-50 wash of flat black 
and thinner uh, and then just put it into the uh, grill mesh there and wipe off the highlighted areas to show the chrome. Then use some Elmer's glue to and put a thin film on the headlights uh, to give them the look of having a lens. After they've dried, install the headlights, the grill, the bumper, and the radiator onto the front of the car. Now get the parts out for the back end and paint the taillight lenses stoplight red and leave the chrome trim, then install those. And add the bumper, paint the chute flat black, and install that too. Now you can slide the body uh, onto the uh, interior in the chassis. It's kind of a loose fit uh, and can be removed, but um, there's no real attachment points, so you can carefully use some glue to attach the edges of the interior tub to the body to set it into place. Then set the hood uh, loosely onto the car. I found that even after sizing and cutting most of the back end of the hood out to allow for the injector stacks, it was still a pretty tight fit. In fact, I had determined that you know, the motor and suspension installation was just a little short. It's too far back towards the cow. So I think that if I had it to do again, I would uh, I would lengthen uh, the drive shaft and the frame just a little bit to make sure that the engine was far enough forward to clear the hood issues with the injector stacks showing. It's about a sixteenth of an inch, but that's what would get it just about right. Overall, it's uh, oh, uh, 1 8 inch too short uh, once done uh, and would still require some, some work. So it, that's something that you might want to undertake for a perfect fit. Depending on the options that you use, you'll have some decals and some extra parts left over from your build. Well, there you have it. And for starters, this is an excellent subject matter kit with gorgeous coloration and beautiful tampo printed tires. The special tinted blue glass and injector stacks make this a real sh a looker for your shelf. But it does have some issues. It's an older kit. I would not recommend it for a beginner. The exhaust headers really should be installed after the motor is installed into the frame. And the fact that uh, the frame is just a little bit too short for the body means that there's going to be some awkward placement uh, including the injector stacks coming through the hood opening. Overall uh, everything was uh, fitting pretty well. There was very little warp uh, but due to the way the body was designed uh, it, it didn't really fit on the chassis exactly correctly. And it wouldn't take that much to extend it but those are some of the issues that you're going to have to look for if you want to make this a real showstopper contest winner. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!